we're back and we're going to kind of show off some photographs, talk about photographs, show some different ways that we display photographs and uh, what we're doing in regards to pictures. Um, obviously, we can put pictures on the wall. I have a whole series in here that I use my own framing system for, uh, which allows me to take a raw print and use magnetic clip frames and put them up there. Those will be for sale eventually on our website. Um, pictures, the way we think of them, don't always have to go on a wall. Well, it's nice and a lot of fun to make big prints. Most of the time we're making prints at letter size, 11, 17, 13, 19, or in some cases, even smaller. So I'm gonna share a little bit about what I make here, and Jeff's gonna share a little bit about what he makes. Dana will help us in our presentation. Plus, Dana has a, a, a bunch of cool pictures too that we'd like to show off. So one of my favorite ways of showing pictures is to be able to put together a group of pictures or a project and be able to share those. And one of the ways I've been doing those recently has been using these tins. We recently did an article on PhotoPXL with us. And these are available from Hanamule. And uh, this is their uh, glossier paper. And I basically take a project, this is a Silo City project, and um, make my prints from there. And this one I did in black and white. I also did a Silo City in color. And essentially, they're actually made so you can take them out. And what I like is I can sit around my living room and pass these around to, uh, and everybody's sitting around a couch rather than an iPhone or an iPad. This allows me to display my images and basically have miniature transportable portfolios. So uh, this was one done in black and white. Almost like playing cards. Yeah, it's, it's quite unique. And what I did, and uh, Jeff will show you, he's done something a little different. I decided I just wanted to kind of make something clever and I used a Dynamo, Dynamo label maker and you, you can see it says Silo City. Low tech. That's Low tech, good. well, I kind of like the idea because when they stack together, you know, yeah. and this is, this is a project called Pyramiden, which is an abandoned city in uh, Norway, Salbar, Norway. This is one called the Palouse, which is really pretty. People really like this. And you can decide whether you want to put borders or borderless, and the corners are rounded. So it's a very clever way. And they make also a five by eight version. And this is one called the Palouse also. And you can see that same truck in the background that uh, Jeff took. He was with me when we did these. And so this is a series of five by eight prints. So I'm going to let Jeff show you what he's done with the tins and uh, he's done some pretty cool things with these. So one of my little projects is I post to a Facebook group called The Visual Conservancy. And what I've done is created a book, 100 posts. You can only post once a week. And I started in January of 2019. And what I've actually done is created a uh, blurb book in uh, Lightroom with the hundred images. And what I did was created uh, five packs of 20, 100 posts. Take a look through there. Well, I, love, I like what you did with the title. So he didn't use a, a Dynamo label maker like me. He was a lot more sophisticated. I used an Epson printer to print it up. <laughs> and his presentation obviously is a lot better than mine. And there you go. Separate it and you've got 100 prints. And these are incredible photographs. Uh, the photographs Jeff has done in this book are a very, very good collection. And Well, uh, we've been together on a lot of them. Yes, yeah, sir. A lot of times we, we photograph. And it's a project that I find interesting because every week I got to go look for a photograph that is worth okay. posting. Did you uh, copy that off someone else's postcard? Mm -hmm. That's no. down in Mike, that, that was down in Michael's. Postcard. No, but yes, in San Miguel, oh, San Miguel. when Michael said, well, it, there, it's just That's a cool. practice bull fight. They're not going to kill the bull. They killed the bull. Yeah. So and this yes, is really I was cool. inspired by, I think, Ernst Haas. Ernst Haas, yeah. yeah. Now, the other thing that I do. Yeah. Surprising. <laughs> <laughs> You, Kevin. Uh, this is a booklet that I gave my wife Becky. We took a trip to the Southwest. The thing that I love about it is that I just print uh, four by six uh, on photo paper and I can just jam them through. This and is the actually, world's smallest panorama. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I like those. Well, you have a lot of interesting projects you've been working on, so you, you must have a lot of time on your hands. No, I don't. <laughs> and, Daniel, this is another one. Uh, this is uh, a different trip to the Southwest. A little bit different, uh, a little bit more precious, I think. Yeah, so where'd you find the covers for that? Uh, Amazon. Amazon. <laughs> you didn't make it? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. It has parchment there in between each picture, like yep. tissue. It's, it's quite nice. So you get the the gist of the, you can actually use. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Reminds me of the old I like black the way corners. It's, yeah, yeah, I like that. It's yeah. pretty cool. Sure. So you get the gist of, of what I'm trying to get across is that uh, it's nice to actually give pictures away to people. On the other hand, I'm more than happy to also sell pictures to people, which is one of the reasons that I did the 100 post book. It's actually going to be kind of my way of, of showing people images that they can order from the book. That's cool. And it's quite, it's fun. I've posted a few times in there, but just keep forgetting sometimes to come back to a week. But you are are religious yeah. on this. You also have your Feline Friday series. Yes, and, and now Monochrome Mondays. Monday. Uh -huh. yeah. And Throwback <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> like Sesame Street with Jeff, you know? Yeah, well, <laughs> it works. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I about, have all these images. How about, about Textured Tuesdays? Okay, I'll contemplate that. But I have all this work, <laughs> and do, I might as well show it. <laughs> so one of the things that I did is I actually uh, filter photo which is a organization that basically does portfolio reviews. I actually created three different portfolios that be reviewed in my little portfolio case. And this... Let's uh, show it so it push your case. Yeah, well, okay, let me... Okay. What I did was... Uh, took just a nice what paper. What is this paper, by the way? I don't know. I just found it in a uh, art store. Okay. Art store has all kinds of interesting paper. But this uh, particular one is uh, early work, some of my more famous images. Way back when, I was a commercial photographer in Chicago, and I really didn't know Jeff. We, I knew of him. And so technically, we were kind of competitors. And when, when I saw this image in a local uh, advertising for photography in Chicago, I realized that I was never going to be as good as Jeff Shiwi. That's when I um, pursued another path and went to business school. <laughs> so, so Jeff drove me out of Chicago, did he? Yeah. And, and all of our friends of Dano were very happy that he did that because uh, Epson has been very good to the photographic industry. Well printed, Jeff. They're really nice. And there's a lot of stories behind these, which uh, he, he might have talked about in some of our other videos, but it's, they're quite cool. This is a series, Cactus. Oh, this is really beautiful. Uh, Guardians of the Desert. Uh, these are all shot with the iPhone and processed using an iPhone app called Tintype. Uh, and then this is a rabbit hole that I started to go down. I didn't like the final results from the Tintype app, so I had to bring it into Photoshop, add additional texture, and <laughs> basically, uh, but it's developed a whole line of new work. And, and the reason I kind of like this is that compared to my early work where I tried to make everything look absolutely perfect, I really like getting into the images and mucking about with these, uh, you know, making stuff f out of focus, blurry, added texture. It's actually kind of fun. Were, were a lot of these shot on, on iPhone? Oh, they're all, all iPhone. Shot, all shot on the iPhone. Yeah. And you started with the Hipstamatic app, if I remember correctly. Well, it's the... Uh, it's Tintype app. Tintype from Hipstamatic. Hipstamatic. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And we will go into how to make these, or how to make these. And you started in Tintypes before you got that Argus C3, didn't you? <laughs> actually, I knew to go. <laughs> and one of the other things that I did was, was fun. Uh, these are what I call my pandemic panos. A pandemic Well, Kevin and I have been around the world shooting. I always shoot panos. And the fact is, most of the time, I don't actually assemble them. So in the pandemic, I got nothing else to do. In the art school I went to, Jeff went to the other school, uh, 
they taught us the importance of presentation. And you might have the perfect print, but if you just kind of throw it at somebody or it's not displayed properly, it diminishes the value. So there's just something about treating, treating your art as art. Well, in the filter photo presentations that I gave, everybody commented on, wow, these presentations are very nice. That's the thing. The whole thing is that I, I've got all this stuff in the computer, but it's not really a photograph, wow. really, until it's printed. Speaking of panoramas, That's you and I good. both entered the uh, International Panorama Contest. Yes, uh, the Epson, Epson Panel World. Awards, mm -hmm. and uh, we, uh, done we, by uh, Epson Australia. Yes. Uh -huh. I spent several hundred dollars entering. I entered, you did yeah, too. I, I entered and, 30 um, and, and won uh, nothing. Yeah, me neither. I didn't even get a, like, a letter back saying well, thank I, you. For I feel this sense of, uh, gee, we know Dano. Uh, yeah, why? Well, no, it's, no, it's, no, it's, no, you're it's not Australian. Yeah. It's like, these were good images. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to actually publish a story about my panos that I entered. And maybe Jeff will share some of his too. It was a worthwhile exercise. Yes. And I enjoyed the hell out of it. Yes. Uh, and Even though was, you had the jam to beat the deadline, because um, I work best under pressure. I know. Even after the the uh, the Pano debacle, where I didn't win anything, I actually oh, did I enter didn't. in uh, a portfolio in the R Photofolios, uh, rphotofolio.org, and these are the images that I entered, and my folio was actually selected. Uh, as one of the uh, uh, merit awards. So uh, uh, if you go to the uh, R photo um, R. org uh, and look for the 2021 selection, uh, these are the images, one of the uh, so uh, portfolios. Merit. Good. Yeah, merit. Yeah. Right. Which means that it was worthwhile. It's actually, I love printing. Well, I do too. It's, it's, uh, I mean, and this is a beautiful series. It really is. And I really like printing out the, the, the P900. We're going to let Dano go last and show some of his pictures. But before I turn it over to Dano, I just want to share one of my newest and latest projects, uh, which I'm having a blast with. And um, um, this is called gilding. So essentially, I print on vellum. And I learned this from Dan Bulk Burkholder, so I'm not taking credit for this at all. And, and all of us that know Dan is a very creative individual and he's always coming up with new ways to do things with rare metals and different coatings and so forth. Yeah, this is where I print on a vellum using uh, the P900 or any inkjet printer. And then you can see it's got gold leaf on the back. So there's a whole process of masking and uh, putting the the size on, which is kind of like an Elmer's glue, and then laying down the gold leaf and, and spraying the print. And you have to kind of pick the right prints uh, to work it on, um, essentially. So uh, I can do gold leafing. This one is silver leafing. I love the silver. The silver and the polar bear work polar great. Bear, yeah. And part of what I'm learning is uh, this gilding method works best if you have a lot of highlight areas or white areas for it to come through. But I'm also trying to balance it out. So this one had a lot of dark areas, uh, but the gold came through on the highlighted areas. And Do I need to be wearing gloves while holding no, these? Or no, okay? these are artist proofs. AP, that's what AP stands for. No, I meant from the metals. No, oh. it's not radioactive <laughs> or anything. And uh, this was uh, one done at the Silo City Complex, and this is one of my favorites. Uh, so far, because it worked out just right, had the right tonality to it. And um, this is a, a gold leaf one done of a locomotive yard in uh, Bolivia. I think that's the locomotive that uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid mm -hmm. rode in. Uh -huh. So it's kind of a, a new process and I'm, I'm staying busy with that. So I think it's really cool that you, as a printer, you get a chance to explore everything else. Um, you can make uh, triptychs. So this is panorama paper. Triptychs. Triptychs, excuse me. Triptychs. Triptychs, yeah. You're a triptych. Yeah. Um, I've also made some images where I've used metallic paper and I go for the bright colors. So th this is uh, some of those done there. This was an iPhone shot, then taken into several apps. And I, I just got my Where's birds. Where's that bird came from? Uh, I'm known for pesky birds. That's my little other project. In Birdman. Birdman. You'll see more pictures from those in, in the very near future. I'll share them on the site. Dana, how about you? Coming to uh, Indy to do this taping, I wanted to make prints 
on different papers that, so we can kind of see that. But yeah, I'm very uh, fortunate. Uh, and now that we're traveling again, uh, even though the pandemic's not over, um, I like to do what Jay Maisel always taught us is, you know, carry the camera because without it, it's tough to take pictures. So all these images that I do are between Epson meetings, in between airports, going to trade shows, and sometimes even uh, breaks and meetings at our headquarters in California. And I was in New York uh, for some meeting, and it was a bitterly cold January day. And I was staying across the street from Bryant Park, which in the summer they show movies, but they have an ice skating rink. I always like to do the opposite of what you're supposed to do. So I was shooting into the sun and uh, tremendously underexposing because I wanted to get the texture of the ice oh, and I wanted to get the, the silhouettes. And uh, I did this with the advanced black and white mode so I could just give it a little bit of a cool tinge to it, mm -hmm. just to, you know, that flavor of it. And uh, there were other photographers there and they were all, you know, trying to capture the action. I was just interested in the shadows. But this is on uh, legacy uh, etching, which has a subtle texture and, and Jeff and I were talking earlier, be careful with textured papers. If When they get small, the texture of the paper becomes the image. Mm -hmm. But as they get larger, the texture can enhance the image. Uh, this is uh, Legacy Fiber, a smooth, fine art paper. We've been uh, joking a lot because they're ideal for video because no matter how I show it, there's no reflections or glare. Uh, but uh, our new corporate office is all printed on Legacy Texture because of the lighting and there's mixed lighting and it just looks uh, ideal. And for this type of image, which is not a highly saturated image, I just thought the, the legacy fiber looked terrific. Uh, I was at a trade show in Amsterdam. I mean, there's worse places to go. And if you've been in that part of the world, there's more bicycles than there are people. And uh, I heard about the world's largest bicycle parking lot, <laughs> which is by the central station. And I, I got there Right as the sun, it was in the winter, so the ecliptic was really low, and it just started to light up all the reflectors yeah, on the that. bikes, huh. and I just and couldn't resist that. There, it's beautiful. Right. And, but this is an image that it needed more punch. It needed, and this is platine, so I could get those blacks. And get that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, this is legacy textured from Old Car City. Larger print, these are 17 by 22 prints. The texture doesn't overwhelm the image, it's just as part of the image. And, and, and you're using a kind of a textured um, subject too, so it kind of lends to it. Old Car City is north of Atlanta, for those of you that don't know where it is. It's uh, two hours, it's in between Atlanta and Chattanooga. Yeah, it's um, kind of not where the action is. No, but it is a worthwhile <laughs> place as yeah. a photographer to visit. And this is Legacy Fiber again, just a close up at Old Car City. But this image uh, from Graffiti Pier in Philadelphia needs saturation, needs color. Uh, so that's why I chose this paper. And uh, I think I may have mentioned earlier, depending on when you're watching these videos, uh, this is a off limits now, uh, pure that's full of graffiti. And I saw this person wearing that jacket and I kept thinking, print sample, print sample. <laughs> <laughs> I always have to show the, uh, the classic Dano picture because, and it demands that it be on the uh, legacy platine because of the color saturation. It's a great shot. Uh, and I was, um, we were shooting videos in Asia, uh, manufacturing facilities and other things in Japan. And, and I, I went to Hong Kong just because I had not been there before. And uh, I went on the double-decker buses and uh, I didn't have the right camera. You know, it was an older camera, the ISO, you know, it really couldn't go that high. So I thought, I'll just go up there and do blurs. Uh, that's, they now call that ICM, intentional camera movement. Sounds no. like something from a gastroenterologist. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a whole new thing. <laughs> they who? They, well, there's a magazine and there's an association and all sorts of things. Intentional oh, camera oh, movement. Me. But, uh, uh, <clears throat> and in black and white, classic platine, you know. Your classic chair. And then the classic chair. But let me finish up here with a paper that you might think, what's he doing? And that's metallic glossy. This is uh, an image in Las Vegas. It was a construction site. And it was just like a vinyl to hide what was going on. And I just thought the colors and the silhouette that's working by uh, on the right kind of image, uh, something I would like, oh, really, uh, metallic, it just kind of, you know, it depends. There's no right or wrong answer. But you know what I like to do, especially when we're doing these kind of things, and even though I was talking a little bit about some papers and things, you have to understand all the technology and the technology's gotten better. But in the end, nobody cares about your, the color space. Nobody cares about, was it a JPEG, was it this thing? You wanna use all those tools so that people just look at your photograph 
and they're not saying what's wrong with it technically. It's all about the print. It, well, in the end, it comes about the print. You know, it's funny, all during this process, we haven't even talked about cameras. We haven't talked about Sony. I think we might have mentioned iPhone in there somewhere. But Well, there was the intentional camera movement. But that doesn't, has nothing, <laughs> it doesn't matter about That's the print. That's generic. Yeah, but now you know a new word. So, oh, I do. Man, I'm going to put it in the glossary. Listen, well, you're going to be out somewhere, and you can send me an email. Hey, uh, look, I did some ICM. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might look that like you like your new paper. <laughs> So as you can see, all of us enjoy taking pictures. We didn't talk about cameras at all. We're splitting hairs almost as it is on any camera today because they all make good files, great enough files that we can take them into whatever processing and printing solution we're using and end up making prints. And I think all three of us stand up here and every time a print comes off a printer, it's like a miracle because if you think about how fast the paper and ink and everything's going on, it's pretty cool when it comes off. And it's incredible that we have paper surfaces that we can work with, colors that we can work with, and the fact that we can now take these without any chemicals and everything and hold these and touch them and pass them around. And it doesn't matter which way you do things. You can make folios, tins, big prints, hang them on the wall, any different way you'd like. It's all about making the print. <laughs> it's a miracle he can actually get the print made. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do pretty good at printing. That's one of my favorite things that I've been doing since a long, long time ago. And uh, it's a blast to be doing it now. So from all of us at PhotoPXL, thanks for watching this segment and we'll see you soon again.